Really. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, last game. And <clears throat> this game, I already made a video on it. So for the, um, as I said before, G3, the Catalan prevents B6. And he played B6, Geary. So this is a Queen's Indian. This is just a normal Queen's Indian. Then he played Bishop B4 check. If you go back to E7, it's a regular Queen's Indian. It's just a Queen's Indian. So like Bishop D2, Bishop E7. In fact, Grishuk has had black in this position and did play Bishop E7. So, but you can also play A5, C5, or takes. Geary played the least common move, C5. Now, when I used to play the Bogo Indian, which is before 80% of the chat was born, I played C5. And when I was 2300 rated, I played in the Cardinal Open in Worthington, Ohio, suburb of uh, Columbus. And I played this against Joel Benjamin. He didn't know it very well. On move 11 or 12, I had a big advantage. And one of us offered the other a draw and it was accepted. And that was by far the strongest player I'd ever drawn. He was like 2670 and I was like 2320. Uh, I used to play this a lot, but I probably haven't played it in 25 years because I don't play Bogo Indian anymore. Okay. And the person you're going to see often in, the, in, in America who has black in these kinds of positions where you don't know if it's a Catalan, a Queens Indian, or a Bogo Indian is uh, Priyadarshan Kanapin, the, uh, the Indian GM who lives in St. Louis. Now, it could be he doesn't live in St. Louis and he's back in India. He moved somewhere else. That's the latest knowledge I have. And I met him in India in 2011. He played Ray Robson in the World Junior and I was coaching Ray Robson. And then a few years later, he moved to St. Louis to go to university. And he graduated and he was at the St. Louis Chess Club a lot. But I don't know where he lives now. I haven't seen him in a long time. I've played him a few times. I have a very bad record. But the last time, let me not the last time, but... In the last three years, I beat him a really good game. But he was always beating me. Um, basically, the first two times I played him, I lost on time, writing down his name, Priyadarshan Kanapin. And then I did a lot of preparation for the next time we played. And <clears throat> I just put Priyadarshan K. And I, I did better that game. I think I drew. Dun, 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 dun. He's in India right now? Good, good. Okay, yeah, the truth hurts. He's one of the few Indians, if not the only one. And there's a lot of Indians. He, he doesn't like cricket. And when I say he doesn't like cricket, it's not that he doesn't like the game cricket. He doesn't like the behavior of his countrymen about cricket. It's like everybody goes insane for cricket. And he's like, you know, okay, cricket's okay, but, you know, stop. That can't be all you think about. And that's, that's all they think about. So he, he was mad. Yeah. Never seen an Indian guy mad about cricket. But that's, there's one of them. So there you go. For $1 million? Man, you might actually give me that $1 million. I mean, I know Priyadarshan. So asking me what it means, you're risking something. Luckily, I don't know. So you win. You hate cricket too? Man, your name's really Indian. Ashish Prasad. God damn. That's a pretty Indian name. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an Indian friend student before you guys were born named Krishnan Sudarshan. And he's about 2000 and, in Michigan. And um, he told me he was playing cricket in a cricket league. And I said, oh, I said, are there any other Indian players like yourself, you know, who came to him? He says, they're all Indian. So that was funny. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. dun, dun. Yeah, Smidler and, and Nigel like cricket. Nigel's not a soccer fan. He's like, everybody loves soccer. He's like, eh. And he's like, but cricket, now you're talking. Yeah. You literally ate crickets. Frankly, crunchy. Okay, yeah, by the way, Rickety Cricket is a genius of the highest caliber. 
He's my favorite character on Sunny, who's not, you know, the original, you know, the, the four or five characters. Although Artemis is great. I mean, they're all great. All the, all the extras are great. But I really love Rickety Cricket. He's one of the producers of the show. And my second favorite episode, probably my third or fourth, it's top five, is Wrestling for the Troops. And Cricket steals the show. Man, Cricket's great. When Cricket hits D with the garbage can, that's one of the greatest moments in TV history. I did not see that coming. That was like in the movie Derailed when the guy gets shot in the car. When he's explaining um, to uh, Clive Owen, you got to surprise your opponent and you make sure he's not ready. And then he gets shot. But unexpectedly from outside. That reminds me of when Rickety Cricket hits, hits a sweet D. That's ah, just great. Everything he did. Terrorist rule. Americans suck. La, 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 la. And that was great. Go Rickety Cricket. Etc. What movie is Rickety Cricket? Oh, Derailed. Derailed's a great movie. It has Vincent Cassell, Clive Owen, Jennifer Aniston, The Rizza and The Jizza. Don't forget it. You don't want to derail, you can go to another stream and talk about the Flintstones movie and the sequel. All good. Me and the RZA, correct. Connect. Oh, yeah. I play chess against the RZA, so there you go. All right. Uh, Viva Rock Vegas, yeah. Yeah, classical music is da bomb. That's why you can't take it on a plane. Um, Gail the Snail. Yeah, Gail's great. Yeah. Hooray. Did Rizzo win? The game didn't end. Okay. So, Geary played C5. You can take or not. He took. That's fine. And then, you know, boring, you know. And Karpov has had this position many times. He played Queen D3 once and then Knight D2. Probably Knight D2 is more common. Okay. And this has all been played... And there's a Karpov game with Pologayevsky, which, I'm sorry, Kasparov game, which Kasparov won. And there's also a Karpov game that he won. So Karpov and Kasparov both had white in this position. Um, and then knight e1, and you can also play knight f1. And Karpov and Kasparov, one played this, one played that. He did it like this. He did it like that. He did it with the wiffle ball bat. So I'm on the run. The cop got my gun. Right about now, it's time to have some fun. The King Ad Rock, that is my name, and I know the fly spot where they got the champagne. Don't forget it. There was a funny thing on the internet like three or four days ago on Twitter. They showed a picture of the Beastie Boys that are alive, not the guy who died. And they looked like, you know, 60-year-old, you know, accountants. They didn't look like they'd ever been famous. Just looked like two schlubs. Yeah, they didn't look like the Beastie Boys. Frankly, terrible. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. All I really want is girl. Dun, 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 two at a time. Yeah, the Beastie Boys were on Futurama. Okay, so he played 91, and this was shocking and appalling. In this position, to me, King takes G2 looks like the right move because you want your knight to go to one of these squares and, you know, put pressure here. Um, but only knight takes g2 has been played previous to this game. And white had five wins and black had two wins. And there were no draws. And this position is pretty equal. So no draws is weird. And the engine does prefer king takes g2. I don't think it was prep. This doesn't seem like a prepared line. Um, I mean, it could be. But, you know, white's a tiny bit better, but nothing to speak of. H5, as Anand put it, doesn't make any sense. Obviously, they're always playing H5. They're putting it in H. And probably the reason Geary played H5 is he knew Anand would do commentary on the chess.com, you know, Twitch and, and YouTube. And he wanted Anand to say H. So that's probably why he did it. And he did. He said H5. Yeah. Now, um, I mean, that's, that's, 
that's not going to, that's going to be bad later. Luckily, it wasn't. Okay, he forced a reckoning, like in Tombstone. And the reckoning happened. And Rook B8 is very passive, but you can't lose this pawn. The funniest thing, which I said on the game of the day, was a couple of engines said this was the best move. And I'll never understand why that's better than this. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Yeah, the engine right now is saying that this is, this is the best move. What? Why is that better than Rick AB? Ridiculous. Okay, so Geary proved he wasn't cheating again. Man, did he prove he wasn't cheating this game. Oh, snap. Yay, it's LJ Gonzi. You're the best person who ever lived. Yeah. Right, and also, as you pointed out, and I pointed out earlier, every round I say the same thing, because always repeat. I say that you must win. And if you win, and you keep winning, and the other people don't win as much, you win the tournament, you play Magnus at the end of the year, and if you win, you, it changes your life totally. Even by losing, it changes your life. So... Napomniachi is, you know, looking good now. You know, before he played in some super GM tournaments and he did okay, you know. But now that he's playing for the world championship, the, the big advantage over somebody who's not playing is not only do you get all that money when you play, if you win and become world champion, you get a lot more money just for being world champion. More appearance fees and, you know, you whore yourself out to companies and then you play another world championship match so you must win and Gary's black needs to go two and oh he goes two and oh he might get more points than a pump might yeah. and then he would play magnus and you know that's not Gary's style must win with black that's not that's not who he is so you know, H5, and he's making the game uh, asymmetrical. And, you know, he thought he was being cute, but it looks like he's being obtuse. So, you know. Uh, let's see, Anand. Me and Anand are like, that, son. I've known Anand for 35 years? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I've known Anand for 35 years. I played him 35 years ago. Man, that's how old we are. We showed everybody. Okay, so e4, which was panned by the... They didn't like e4. The reason they don't like e4, the, the critics, e4 is fine, is after e5, this pawn can't be defended by a pawn, which it could have here, and therefore the knight's going to get to c5. So positionally, that's going to help black, and this pawn could be weak. Knight here, queen here, knight here, rook here. So... A lot of the commentators didn't like e4, but e4 is good. Queen d3, defending everything. And knight c7, knight e6 is weird, because his knight can get to c5 just by taking. So I'm not a big fan of this. Okay. Then Anand said something very funny. Okay. He said, my hair is real. And then everybody was on the floor laughing, including him. Because, you know, it was a joke. Okay. Anand said, ooh, I think rook b5 is good. Let's look at rook b5. And they looked at it, and then Grishuk played rook b5. And Anand's like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I know I suggested it, but I don't like it. So that was funny. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. Bum, ba, bum. I like when I say things that are obviously jokes, and you're like, I guess that's not what happened. Yeah, nobody's laughing at my joke. They're just laughing at my analysis. <laughs> okay, I don't care. I don't care. Okay, now he played rookie eight, which confused the audience. The audience, the GM commentators wanted to play H4, put it in H. And H4 is a reasonable move. And one of the ideas, other than putting it in H, is knight H5, and you're threatening to win the queen. So that's, you know, reasonable. Um, and h4 would cause Grishuk some issues because he has to figure out how to meet it. And I never meet anything because I'm a vegan, so I would never, I would just lose. 
Uh, Kirkland JG subscribed. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, this is my opinion, Anish played very well this game, just like Wang Hao, until he didn't. Once upon a time, Anish was falling in love, but now he's only falling apart. Anish was slightly worse or equal the first, you know, 20, 25 moves of the game, and then he the pressure was too much. Now, there's no way any of you will ever understand this because you're not 2,800. The pressure that you guys feel in, in situations that are not as important as this, you think like, well, they're 27, 2,800. They don't feel the pressure like I do. When, when you play a board game, and the result of this board game could change your life forever. That's an abnormal situation. If Anish Giri plays for the world championship or becomes the world champion, it, it's millions of dollars of difference, fame. For the rest of history, he was a world champion. And if he doesn't play for the world championship, then who, who's Giri? I never heard of him. And, you know, and, and then, and Sopi goes like, Dude, I've had enough of you. Where's Magnus? Okay. Maybe, maybe Jan. Okay. So, tremendous pressure on Geary. And, you know, he, he played really well, and then he didn't. Grishuk, no pressure. Grishuk wins, loses, or draws. He'll make some jokes in the press room, and he'll leave. But, you know, Geary, Geary needs to win. And even if you tell yourself not to feel the pressure because you know it'll make you play worse. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing. And I used to have an argument with a 1900-rated friend of mine, and he got mad at me, as per usual, like all, all the people I know do. And I was explaining to him, <clears throat> when I lose a, a tournament game, that's worse than when he loses. And then he, he fired back. He's like, you guys always think that, that like, Low-rated players don't care when we lose, but we do. And he was like, rawr. And I said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I said, when you lose, it doesn't change your life. You go to work on Monday. When I lose, I don't eat. I don't pay my rent. The only way I make money is through chess. So if I lose the last round and it costs me $1,000, that's bad. If you lose the last round, it doesn't cost you $1,000 because you're not playing for that. But if it did, you, you weren't expecting any money. You're playing a tournament. You go to work the next day. And he was like, yeah, okay, you're right. So being a professional chess player at a lower level like me, not the top 10 in the world, but some random GM, you play in weekend tournaments, the World Open, Chicago Open, stuff like that, National Open, all kinds of tournaments. And sometimes in the last round, you lose thousands of dollars. And that's, that's no fun because you need that money to live. And I'm in a situation now where that's not the case. So I'm just playing for fun when I go to a tournament. Now I just try to have no draws. Um, and the young people, they're playing for norms and they're playing like geniuses because they go home to their mommy. When you're age 10 to 17 and you're kicking my ass, <clears throat> which you are, if I beat you and you don't win any prize money, you, you know, you go home. You don't care. So when you're in your 20s and 30s and you're a professional chess player and you travel tournament to tournament, which used to be the case, it, it's a sad existence because sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't. And now there's online and there's private lessons and there's streaming, and there's videos. Now there's a lot more ways to make money. But, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, if you were like me, you went to tournaments and you hoped you got a prize. And then if you didn't, you were like, damn, didn't win a prize. So th this is a huge moment in Anish Giri's life. If he wins this game and wins the next game, probably going to play Magnus at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, so very hard to play now. So far, he's played fine. 
And unfortunately, it uh, goes downhill. Rookie hits okay. He wants to put pressure on the E pawn, as I said earlier. Uh, White could take the pawn on E5. It's a pawn sacrifice. The engine doesn't like it very much. It thinks black is doing okay because these are weak. The C5 square is available later. The black can take over the D file. Knight G4 later. And the extra pawn doesn't mean much right now. So the engine thinks this is about equal. The rook on E5 is in a strange square. So instead he played H4, stopping black from playing H4. G6 is sort of slow. He could still take this and play Knight C5. Still in the drawing zone. F3, never do that. Stops this, protects this. It's not clear what black can do now. Now, if this was a normal random game that wasn't to see who played Magnus, Geary would be very solid and try to draw the game, but he can't do that. Got to win. So knight d7, knight f1, here comes the knight. And in this position, black should be fine. And he played the wrong plan, and he was not fine. Because he has two squares for his knights. Those are good squares. And these, and, and these pawns are isolated and weak. This pawn's isolated and weak. This pawn's backward and weak. If you don't believe me, you can ask Farnsley 69. Obviously, white's threatening here. Uh, he played knight e5. Not the engine move, but it's fine. Okay. And this is the last chance he had to likely draw. Likely. He has to play rook c8 and rook c5. And then, eh, he's slightly worse. You know, maybe white would still win because, you know, white can get the knight to d5. But I, I, th I think Geary would have probably drawn. Geary can't play for a draw. Geary has to figure out how to win. And the rest of the game, he, he didn't play well. Okay, knight c6 is a bad move. And now this is weak. You've, you've blocked your attack on the C pawn. The knight is worse on C6. You can't attack with your rook. Can't attack with your knight. Now I can really attack this pawn. Yeah. This is also not a good move. And now he made a very poor move. He has to put his knight back on E5. But he said he's never going back. And I was like, why? And he says, once you have black, you never go back. And I was like, all right. Then he went back, 97. And now he's definitely losing. Queen d2. And this is a great knight. This knight just got worse. And white got his pieces on the right squares. You can't allow this. And when I say you can't allow that, he did. And if you play rook b d8, the b6 pawn's hanging. Rook, d, uh, rook e d8, double on the bubble up. The only way to not lose the pawn is to play the horrible knight c8. And then your knight can't leave c8. It's going to stay there the rest of the game. And you're giving away the d5 square. The engine doesn't even look at that move. It just says, hmm, which pawn should I lose? Okay. Now, Geary realized he was worse and or lost. And he went for broke. And then he was broke. And I asked Geary, and he was, he was really sad. I said, you're, you're from a broken home. And he said, yeah, we was broke, so what? So he was pretty mad. Um, Black's losing here, but he accelerated his defeat by playing crazy like Fox News. F5. That's hopeless. This pawn's attacked a billion times. This pawn's going to be captured. This pawn's now weak. That just loses more quickly. He wouldn't have played like this if he needed a draw before the game. He would have played much more solid. And I always tell my students, never move pawns. And both players moved all their pawns. And that was the last one. Now there's too many weaknesses. Bam! This was first played in the game Gotcha Bitch, which was, Grishuk mentioned it in the press conference. He said it with a Russian accent, though. Gotcha Bitch. Okay. Um, Knight C6, also a bad move. And now the game is over for more than one reason. But Grishuk played the simplest every time. E takes F5. And the only way black cannot resign is to take this. Then you're up a piece. Okay, that loses more quickly, but at least you don't resign. Check. If king h8, h6, threatening mate and mate. And if you try to perpetual check, there's no more checks. 
And to show you how funny it is, the engine plays that. <clears throat> so you have to play uh, King F8, which loses for the same reason. Uh, more than one way to win, but F6, threatening mate. If you stop the mate, you're a better player than I am. And it's the same. Check, check, here, king g3. Uh, here you can play here or here. This doesn't work. So you got to play here to stop queen g7 mate. Uh, then queen here check. This is the only move. Rook g5. And, you know, are you kidding me? Yeah. And the engine says plus a billion. Yeah, it's it's forced mate, but it'll take it like a few minutes. Um, the first, the worst, the third best move is mate and eight. The second best move is plus seventy four. The best move is only plus thirteen right now. So you get mated if you play uh, rook here to stop mate. It's mate and three. This is mate, so that's bad. And this is the same mate, and it's the same deviled egg. Okay, so both players saw that taking the knight was hopeless. And if you can't take the knight, you have to resign. He didn't resign, which he would have done in a normal tournament because he's trying to get in the candidates. So, you know, maybe Grishnik will get sick. Maybe Grishnik will forget about his clock. Maybe Grishnik will resign on purpose because he's insane. So you give him a chance to, you know, and, you know, resigning would have been best. Because the rest is a massacre. What's funny is <clears throat> Grishuk rarely played the computer engine best move. He always played the human you have no chance move. Like the engine move is C5. And he played here. You can't take the pawn because the rook's hanging. Uh, if you take the rook and I take back, then you're getting crushed over here. And the knight on D6 defends C4. So he retreated. Then he retreated and defended his pawn. Attack the rook. He retreated to stop him from being checked. Just no play for black. None. Then black wants to play b5. He's like, nope. And this is just the wrap it up button. This is just because he's trying to get to the kit to play Magnus. He, he knows he's dead, 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 lost. Two pawns up for nothing. And here he resigned. The engines say like plus 4,000. White's got pass pawns to the right of him, pass pawns to the left of him, shattered and sundered, stormed at with pass pawns, a niche who had fought so well, shattered and sundered. Oh. So the truth hurts. Look at my hand drawn, gave five subs. And if you want to see less funny analysis of this that ends more quickly, she said go to um the chess.com youtube page and i do a game of the day recap for every round and those videos are like 12 to 20 minutes long and i just analyze the game i don't make any x-rated jokes you know i don't say anything silly just just straight analysis straight cash and tomorrow as i did last week i'm doing live commentary on you know chess.com's YouTube and Twitch page if the round is over, and it will be, um, <clears throat> for Title Tuesday. And obviously Hikaru can't play in Title Tuesday or Faruja or etc. because of the Magnus tournament. Now, it's possible, because I don't know, they have a rest day tomorrow. If they have a rest day tomorrow, all those guys will play in Title Tuesday. If they don't have a rest day then that Magnus tournament is going to go on the same time as Title Tuesday. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm doing the live commentary. It might be on the chess.com Twitch page. If the tournament's still going on um, and, uh, and the candidates, then it'll be on the Chesscom events Twitch, which has like six followers. So not as good. <clears throat>